walked up here from the locker room and I'm out of breath. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Good to be with you guys. Uh, I'll just uh, answer any questions um, that you might have here. Um, I do want to begin just to say, you know, this is, uh, I think, been a hard week for uh, for everybody, and uh, certainly as a program, um, our thoughts are with uh, all those that uh, have been impacted by uh, what's happened uh, in Las Vegas. So, um, you know, as much as anything as a coach, I think we're always trying to make sure that our players uh, and we as a program understand that there's um, a lot of stuff that's bigger than us and bigger than what we're doing. And, um, you know, this is just an example for us, I think, to, uh, to make sure our players are reminded that, that uh, um, there's some tough stuff going on. And uh, obviously, we're a ways away from it, but our hearts are with all those that have uh, been impacted by that. So um, I also uh, move on here quickly, just a couple house cleaning items here. Um, well, before I do that, I want to congratulate Mike uh, Conley on being uh, inducted into the Hall of Fame. What an incredible honor and a, uh, so well deserved for for him. He's, you know, I've exchanged a lot of text uh, with Mike uh, here in the last couple weeks, and I think my first weekend on the job, uh, and he's been he's been incredible, and uh, what a, what an example for. Uh, all of us on what it means to be a pro's pro. Everybody that's coached him or been around him has been impressed with who he is as a human being uh, and obviously who he is as a, as a player and a teammate. So congratulations to Mike. And uh, also Kyle Young has, um, oh, there's Mike's former teammate there, Greg Oden. Uh, another pretty good one. Um, uh, Kyle Young has uh, had his tonsils removed yesterday so he will be out for a significant amount of time. What that is, it's, we're not certain right now, um, but it'll be a few weeks, we think, for sure. So um, had his tonsils removed, felt like doctors felt like it, he had been having some, some uh, just infection issues um, this fall. So they felt like this was um, needed very much needed or else he was going to continue to have have issues and uh so he he, he did that yesterday and um surgery went really well and uh he's on the mend anything else i missed there Dan? okay when when you say a couple of weeks does that put the start of the season in jeopardy for him i you know i i would say does it will he be healthy for like our first at full strength for our first scrimmage um, that's probably doubtful. Will he play? Sure. Uh, he's not going to be, I don't think he's going to be at full strength. Um, but uh, I would think by the time we play our first game, he should be back into a, a reasonable flow. And when we talked to you the other day before camp started, you said you were looking forward to getting to know your team because you've had to do so many things aside from just coach this group. I know you're only a few practices in, but what have you learned so far and, and what has that experience been like of just being on the court with your guys finally? It's been great. I think it's been an, um, it's, it's been a, a terrific uh, time here and in, in just we're on practice number four, but it's been a terrific first three uh, practices uh, in terms of just getting the chance to spend time with our guys in this setting for an extended period of time. Um, uh, they've been really receptive, uh, and listen, let's, let's be honest, right? Most teams are good, uh, and have the right approach in the first, you know, week or a couple weeks for that matter. Uh, the challenge for us will be, um, how consistent can our approach, uh, continue to be? And what is our work ethic when we get into some of these dog days that you get into once, once you're in it for a while, but, um, you know, I like our team's uh, versatility at a couple different positions. We understand the depth issues that we have on the perimeter, and we're in the process of trying to figure out um, how we're going to manage that. 
Coach Fred Yates with Global Radio Network on the move with Sports Chaos. How has the adjustment been for, obviously, with the new guys coming into the program? Now you got some veteran guys that have been in the program for a couple of years. How has that transition been, um, trying to get everybody on the same page now, as far as especially with adapting to what you and the new coaching staff are trying to, trying to implement in the program now? Well, I think it's a, it's a daily process. It's evolving. You know, I don't think the, the, that uh, buy-in happens overnight. I think that is a pro that's a process built on trust and uh, a relationship over time. I, I just I think our guys have a great approach right now, but but um, uh, our, our complete buy into what we're doing will be tested once we get popped a little bit um, or hit hit some adversity. I've 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 maintained I really like our our leadership within our our older guys. Now that'll be tested, and we'll we'll see if what I like um, is it, you know it, it, what I'm seeing is you know when we get tested how that how that looks. But I really like with uh, Jay Sean and Kada and Cam and some of those other guys that have been in the program for a while. I, I like what what I'm seeing. Chris, uh, there seems to be a wave of social activism taking place in the NBA. Things like that tend to filter down. I'm wondering what you would tell your guys if they wanted to get involved in that sort of thing. Sure, I, I think it'll be something that um, that we'll have a discussion with as we get closer to uh, game day. And um, you know, I I, I think um, that'll be something we'll have to think through and talk through as a team. Uh, but. I believe in the right for our players to express themselves uh, based on their own convictions. Um, I, I really believe in that. So uh, I've not had uh, something in a player in the past that has wanted to do that. But if, if someone did, um, then I just would want to discuss that with them. And I would certainly support them. I know you talked about singing Carmen, Ohio to the student section after yes. games. I you're not, I guess, planning to do a Midnight Madness type event this year, but I'm wondering what other types of things you might have in mind when it comes to forging that relationship between your team and the student body and the fan base as a whole. Do you have some things in mind that, that, that you're mulling over that would go toward that? You know, I, I think Carmen, Ohio is just kind of an expression of um, – uh, how we feel about being here, being at this uh, part of this university, and certainly engaging with the students. I think our guys have done some things in the last couple of weeks uh, that have went went out uh, on campus. Um, I think that the, the uh, blacktop is that still in play? Okay, um, so we're still having some discussions there, but I think you'll see uh, our involvement. It's a little bit different because we've we've been. Um, on the run here a little bit, but um, I think that's going to be very important. You know, our, our engagement with the student body and with the fans, it's really important. We want to make uh, this place uh, a difficult place to play. Ultimately, I think our fans will respond to how we play on the court and not necessarily, certainly wins and losses has, a, has an impact, but how we play, uh, I think will determine the energy around our program in a lot of ways. Chris, you were just talking about like a consistent approach after week one, keeping that work ethic. In prior teams that you've coached, what have those teams had that you've been able to do that, been able to do that? And two, what have those teams been able to accomplish when you have that consistent work ethic in the preseason? Well, I think you're 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 trying to get your team to reach its full potential. Uh, whatever that looks like. And that can be, a, you know, in some people's minds, a subjective thing, right? I mean, we, I'm in the airport yesterday and I grab one of these magazines and I see another magazine that's picked us uh, near the bottom or at the bottom. Uh, so that can be a, a subjective thing. I, I think we're in the process of defining what that's going to be like uh, here each and every day. I just think our, our teams that, that I've coached that have been successful have been really you know what we talked about last week have really had young men that have been able to withstand um, the adversity with the right response um, throughout the season and have been able to just keep coming and have had a kind of a single purpose a single mindedness to them and um, and I think you know 
however you want to uh, define that resilience, uh, um, grit, there is that that uh, is going to determine a lot of what our season is going to look like. And listen, I, I'm a big believer that you practice those things. So those aren't things that you turn on on game night and you've never experienced out on the practice floor. That has to be practiced over and over. And then we have to evaluate what's their response when we put them in difficult situations out here. And if it's not the kind of response that we want, then it's our job to, to it's my job to correct that and hope that we can uh, move towards a better response. That's really, I think, how you build some of the stuff that we're looking to build. And, you know, that some of that will be defined by how we – or determined, excuse me, by how we progress throughout the season. Are we better in February uh, than we were in January? Um, that that remains to be seen. Coach, I'm curious about the series with UC and when did the Cold War end and how did this – what was the genesis of this and how many people had to sign off to say, yeah, we'll play them? We're like six questions in, and that's my first question on this. Shocking. Um, um, you know, I, I give um, Gene Smith, our athletic director, a lot of credit uh, because uh, I, I think he was certainly behind, in a lot of ways, this idea of, of, of playing this and, and supporting uh, a series like this. So I think he deserves a, a lot of credit. Thank uh, you. Excuse me? And you? Well, yeah. I mean, I had to sign off on it. Um, he wasn't going to tell me you have to play it, or maybe he was. Uh, but, um, you know, cer certainly we both had to be in agreement on that. And I, I just, I totally, I get in some ways, I mean, I, I understand some ways why it hasn't happened in the past. So I, I can understand that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm not an, uh, I understand that. I'm not an idiot. Um, uh, but I just think it's – listen, though Cincinnati is a top 25 program right now. Uh, you know, that's a – if you win that game, that's a good RPI um, game. And that helps you. Um, and not only that, but it's – there's no question the thirst from our fans has been – Yeah, doesn't it build better. excitement when you need excitement? Yes, I think it does. And, and I don't know that I really – understood that until I had spent uh, maybe a few weeks, a couple months here. I just didn't, I don't know that I, you know, I'm, from a distance, I didn't understand the, the, the thirst for that from our, from our fans. And even the relationship with Cincinnati, probably more so than any other program uh, in the state. So I think that was an education for me a little bit. Um, but once I understood that and I, you know, we played, I played Cincinnati in the past. Uh, and, and you just you you know I think the fact that they are again are a are a high level program a quality program uh, makes it, it makes even more sense beyond the fact that like if your fans are hollering at you to play a certain team and it it's of no benefit I'm going to have to say sorry fans but this isn't the most prudent move right now um, but this. This met all, I think, the requirements to be a really high-level game, and excitement was certainly a big part of it. Coach, is that right? Um, you know, I just think uh, you've heard that over over the years, right? Any type, uh, you know, I heard that when I was in Indiana. Why would Indiana? Uh, do the Crossroads Classic with, uh, with why would Indiana Purdue do Crossroads Classic with with Butler, uh, but but it's changed in the last really 10, 15, 20 years maybe. Whereas, you know, um, uh, we have certainly some accomplished programs. Uh, you know, uh, there was a year in particular when we were at Butler where Indiana beat us in that game. And Indiana was on the bubble for most of the tournament, NCAA tournament bubble for most of the season. And we were their signature win. Uh, I was in my first year coaching. And so that's, right, that's, you know, when, when, when you're thinking back on things, 
I, I think the argument that, hey, you don't have to play him because you're uh, the state university, that doesn't resonate with me as much um, because, again, the quality of the program and the, and the uh, energy around the game and the fact that it could be a really good RPI game. Can I follow on that? Uh, Big Ten has a series with Big East, which will bring Xavier into play, perhaps a part of the Gavit teams. Maybe not the same year you play Cincinnati, but you foresee maybe that happening at some point. And people will be very excited about that as well. A game with Xavier? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's something I'm open to. Uh, obviously, we have a we have a I have a history with, with them, and uh, it's certainly another really good program. So it would fit kind of the criteria that we're looking at. Um, uh, there's no plans in place. The one thing I would just remind everyone is scheduling takes. You know, this was unique in a, in a way to try to to get this squeezed in at this point this quickly. We're playing at UC next year, like. That, that doesn't always happen. So the, the you know, there's not going to be a massive overhaul that you're going to see in the schedule a anyway. Like, I don't look at, 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 at the schedule that Thad had and say, this needs a massive overhaul. Um, I think there are some, some changes that I want to make that philosophically I believe in. But um, there are still going to be um, uh, games from uh, – games at home against – programs that might be of, of uh, smaller schools. Um, and there's still going to be series that we have that, that dictate what we can do more or limit what we can do moving forward. Um, so, and there's also conversations, as many of you know, of, of potentially more Big Ten games. So all that makes it difficult to make too many overhauls. Coach, in terms of your, your practice, I assume you and Coach Mata have different differences in your in your practice philosophy. I'm wondering how long it takes for players to kind of pick up on maybe a different style in practice, and when do you anticipate that they'll pick it up fully and really be able to go 100%? Because um, I imagine there's a learning curve there. There is. There's a lot of thinking. You see a lot right now. Uh, we're slower in our reaction time right now uh, because guys are doing a lot of thinking. I think that'll be the case for the first month, month and a half. I think in games, we probably won't be as good in November, hopefully, than we are uh, later in the year because there's a thinking that, going, that, that is going on, and we know that slows down reaction time. I'm hoping that, you know, uh, guys will, will play off reflexes um, and muscle memory, and as we continue to build habits, that that will happen in the next few weeks. But it certainly hasn't happened yet. There is, a, you know, that normal transition that's probably slowed them down a little bit the possible changes to the Big Ten schedule going forward. And I wonder how much, as you start to look ahead to preseason tournaments or yeah. things, how much does that, the potential of going to 20 games, impact what you can do? It does, because we're tied into some series right now. Our schedule is tied into some future series. Mention the Gavit games, um, the Big Ten ACC challenge, uh, obviously the CBS um, event. So I would like to play in some of these events that happen um, uh, some of these tournaments, whether it's Maui or, you know, uh, Battle for Atlantis, whatever. I would like to do that. But um, I'm also, you know, you can't play, uh, you know, 30 high major games. That, that's not fair to your team. Um, so there, there is, you know, we're, we're looking at that. It's a puzzle we're trying to put together here based on what I would like to do and what is reality. Um, but I think having uh, – the biggest thing is, is can we have a, a couple games in the non-conference that people really find attractive in those kind of November, December months, and can at least one of them be at home, maybe two of them be at home? I think if you can do that, uh, your fans it, – it will excite your fan base, and they'll understand that, hey, soon enough, Big Ten play's coming. Um, but if we can have one or two really attractive games, you know, they're all attractive to coaches. Like, we don't look at it, you know, any other game and say, wow, we're, you know, we're going to wear our best suit for that game because that's, they're all really important and really big to us. But it's different for your fans. Because you'd mentioned Xavier earlier, and um, it's been reported you guys will play them in a scrimmage here in the preseason. I just wonder how that came about and what you hope to get out of scheduling them. 
uh, a regular season game or a scrimmage? I would just say don't ever, don't believe everything you read on Twitter. That would be my blanket statement for this whole year. But, um, yeah, we, we, uh, we do have something uh, with them. You know, I just think it was scheduled actually prior. Um, uh, Thad had talked to, but Chris and I are friends. Um, so, um, they're in, I mean, they're a top 15, top 20 program right now. Uh, uh, so, there's going to be a lot of benefits from that. It makes a ton of sense for us because um, – you get a dose of honesty and reality in those settings, and why not do it against a high-caliber team? And how is on uh, how, three practices and four practices in? Progressing well, uh, needs to get in shape. I'll, I'll go with this last one. He's progressing well, needs to get, get in shape, um, has a really good mind for the game, but he's got a ways to go in conditioning, and it's not his fault. He just, he's got a long ways to go. Yes, sir. A few of the players mentioned Coach Q implementing some player-specific workouts and, uh, and workouts to strengthen some weaknesses. I was wondering what, what are the benefits of those workouts and what have you seen from the guys in those workouts? We've tried to get a little bit leaner and we've tried to do a lot of, and I'm not well-versed in all that they did in the past, but we've tried to do a lot of um, um, functional movements functional basketball movements in Q's workout, and he's tried to tailor that uh, to each guy's specific uh, needs for improvement. Um, so it's been a lot of, a lot of functional, ba not a ton of heavy lifting, a lot of functional basketball stuff. I think it's been well received by them, um, uh, and Q's done an outstanding job. Um, we've got a ways to go. We're, physically, we're not an imposing team right now. Um, and we need we need to get there. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, guys.